Hello, I'm Nuno Carvalho, and today I'm going to be giving my predictions for the point distributions for the 2021 AP Physics C Electricity and Magnetism FRQs. So for a little bit of background, uh, I am an ENM student this year, and I've done a lot, a lot of FRQ practice. I've done every FRQ for the past 23 years. And so I think I have a pretty good idea of how College Board likes to distribute their points in these FRQs. And so I'm going to be giving my prediction, and hopefully you'll find this useful because I've made videos going over the solutions to the three FRQs. And you can see which ones you're getting right, which ones you're getting wrong, and then also see how many points you'd be getting, and then predicting whether you'd be getting a 5, 4, 3, and so on. Um, Okay, so we'll start here with FRQ number one. Each FRQ is always going to be worth 15 points. Uh, and something that I felt was a little bit unusual about this year's FRQs is that there was a lot, a lot of questions. So uh, each question alone was not worth that many points, I feel, compared to previous years. Uh, and I think my point distribution here will show that. So for part A, I think it's just a one point question. There is not a lot of work to be done. You just get a point for the correct value. Part B, uh, now this one's a little bit more involved. I think you had to get the right current. Uh, you had to calculate the right current that was going through the circuit through the battery. Uh, and then from that, you had to connect that to Ohm's law. And then finally, if you got the correct value, you'd be getting the right answer. I should mention that a lot of these, the correct value, you can still get the point for it, even if you, if it actually isn't the correct value, as long as you plugged in the right number from a previous answer. Um, so like, let's say for part B, you needed an answer from part A and for part A, you got it wrong, but you still substituted it correctly into part B, you could still get the right point. Okay. So just be wary of that. For part one and part C, uh, I think it's sort of similar. There's, there's two different things here. I think that they're looking for one is the correct value itself, but even before that, I think they want to see you calculating the correct equivalent capacitance. Uh, so I think there's two points in that one. And then for part two, usually all of these uh, types of questions where you have to choose an answer and then you justify it, it's usually worth two points, sometimes three. Uh, but for all of these, I put two points, one for the correct choice and one for the correct justification. I should mention, sometimes you don't get a point for the correct choice, even if it is the correct choice, if your justification doesn't make any sense at all. So uh, care, you should worry more about the justification. If it's not accurate at all, then they might not even give you a point for choosing the right uh, choice here. Okay, for part D1, this is the quickest question. There's So there's only going to be really one point for the correct value. Uh, but then for part two, it's a little bit more involved. I think, again, you get a point for showing Ohm's law, uh, but then you are going to also get a point for the correct value for this final answer. Uh, part E, this is where you have to graph uh, two things. And so I think they're looking for two, two main things here. Uh, and one's going to be the correct maximum value since they tell you to label it here. And they also want to see that it's decreasing and going to be going asymptotically to zero. Uh, they might actually split the sum into another point as well. I don't know where they take it from, but it could be three points total. Uh, and instead it would be that it's decreasing. And the other point would be that it's going to be, I guess, concave up. Uh, going asymptotically to zero. So they might add an extra point to this question. And then part F, same thing. You get a point for the correct choice and also the correct justification. I don't think if you if your justification is wrong, I don't think they'll give you the point for the correct choice on this one, to be honest. Okay, for number two here, this is the experiment question. Uh, and so starting with part A, part one, they're asking you to draw a line that represents the best fit. I think just as long as you have a line that goes approximately through every point, like in the, in the middle range between them, uh, and isn't like way above or way below, you'll get a point. Now for part two, this is usually a more involved question, and I can, I can see them fitting three points into this. One for calculating the slope using points on your line, uh, not points from the data itself, but points that are going to be laying on your line. Then I think you get a point for connecting that slope to the equation for like that, that has to do with Coulomb's law, right? So K times Q squared over D squared. And then I think finally get a right, you get a point for choosing the right value um, that you get for charge Q. So I think that's a three point question right there. Then for number three, I think it's just, uh, I can't see any way that they wouldn't uh, just do one point for this, which is circling the right answer here. And then for part four, again, it's not very involved of a problem. I think you just get a point for the correct value given the point that you chose. So I think they'll, they'll be leaning on that. If you chose the wrong point, but you still calculated the right distance, you'd get a point. For part five, what physical quantity does the vertical intercept represent? So I think you get here a point for the correct force, and then you'll also get a point for the justification, something that's talking about the y-intercept and how that relates to the distance between the spheres and why then it's going to be the gravitational force for part V. 
Okay, now we're going to part B here, and again, it's a justification question with two choices. So I think you get a point for the correct choice and one for the correct justification. Uh, they might not even give you the point for the correct choice again with the justification since it's just a yes or no. So it's like a 50-50 chance. They might put more weight on the justification itself. Um, so, so that might be the way that they arrange this. Then for part C, I think they'll just give you a point on this one here for doing the correct locations, right? So they sh the two positive charges should be away from each other. And then for part two, I think you just get a point for the correct explanation as well. Then for part D, similar to part C, just a point for the correct locations. Um, and then finally for part two of, parts of part D here, I think again, you get one point for the correct choice and then one point for the correct justification as well. FRQ number three was the one to do with magnetism, and this was a little bit more calculation heavy. I felt like the first two were a little bit more theoretical. Uh, now here we, we actually have a couple more calculations to do, and so we can expect also more points per question because there were less questions in this. So part A, we're asked to derive a equation here, and so I think there's three points that you're going to find here. One is for correcti correctly bringing up Ohm's law. Uh, another one's for correcting bringing up uh, Faraday's law, right? So this is here connecting the current to the voltage. This is correct, uh, connecting the voltage to the magnetic flux. And then finally, a, a point for the correct equation that's going to be overall combining those two things. Then for part B, uh, we're given values here, uh, but we're still, we still have to now think about two different things here. One is going to be you get a point for connecting energy and power, which should be an integral in this scenario here. Um, so you should say that the energy is equal to the integral of power. Uh, then you're going to get a point for doing the power formula correctly. So you can use any of the three that, that you can use, right? Like IV or I squared times R or V squared over R. Any of those would work. And then finally, I think you get a point for just plugging everything in, everything in and getting the correct value at the end. Okay, then for part C, uh, again, it's a justification question. So I think you get a point for the correct choice, and then you get a point for the correct justification. Uh, it's just something that has to do with the, the angle and the cosine and stuff like that. Um, that, that should do it. Uh, then for part D, um, I think I'm, I don't know if this would be worth two points. I just couldn't really find where to fit another point. Uh, but I definitely would get a point for the correct value of the angular speed. And I think you might get a point as well for just showing that you know that that angular speed is coming from the period of the graph. Um, so maybe there's two points there, maybe only one. I'm not too sure. Then for part E, I think... Uh, there are three points to be gained here. One is for, again, it's, well, actually, it's for coming up with the EMF equation, which you, I think, in theory, should have already calculated from a previous uh, question here. Oh, wait, no, sorry. You you come up with it in this question. You use it later for another uh, problem here. Uh, so you get a point for writing the correct equation for EMF. I think then you get a point for showing that you're taking the maximum of this by just looking at the maximum of the sine function that's part of this equation. Then finally, the correct value where you plug in all these, uh, all the, the values that are given to you for the constants, and then you get a point if it's the correct one. Then finally, for part F, uh, I think you will get a point for each of the two attributes that are different, right? So the period of this graph here should change, and so should the amplitude. It could be possible that the point that I'm kind of sketchy on for part D might actually go here, and it's depending, and it has to do with the justification here that you give. It's just that I feel like the the justification is really already tied in with the drawing, so I don't know if they would if they would give double points basically or be counting um, for that again. But but if there is going to be an extra point in this one, I think it would probably come from from part D there. Uh, but yeah, that would be FRQ number three. So if you're wondering how you did, like you know what points do I need to get to be getting a five? I looked at the 2019 uh, scoring statistics. Uh, to kind of make a, a comparison, since that's the closest test and most recent test to the 2021 exam. Uh, and I believe you don't want to be missing more than 15 points to get a 5 here, okay? So you should be aiming to get like 30 points, at least 32 points on the FRQ. And if you really want to be safe, try to not be missing more than 10 points here. Um, so try to get like a 35 at least out of 45. Uh, this of course changes if you did really well or really badly on the multiple choice, but I'm just sort of assuming um, if you do equally well on the FRQ and multiple choice, that's sort of where I'd be aiming around a 32, um, like a yeah, like a 30 or 32 uh, in terms of the FRQs. Um, as you know, uh, EMAG actually has a pretty high five rate of like 35 to 40 percent. Um, so I hope that a lot of you watching this video will be getting that five. Um, but if not, hopefully you still get a four or you pass or whatever, and you know you get college credit or whatever you're looking for from this exam. 
But yeah, let me know what you think the points distributions are. This is my prediction. Soon when College Report releases the scoring guidelines, this video will be kind of useless. But until until then, you can imagine in your head what those points are going to be for your exam.